Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brandt with CPC Bodybuilding, the home of men's classic physique. Got a preview of the Pittsburgh Pro today, and my special guest to preview this is 2022 Classic Physique Olympian from PA himself, Anthony Barbera III. Thanks for That's joining great. the show. Man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Always love doing these with you. Yeah, it's going to be a hell of a show, guys. And uh, who better to have on than uh, a great classic physique athlete himself? Uh, so before we jump into the lineup, want to make sure we give Barb's a uh, well-due shout-out here. So you can find him here on Instagram. His tag is Coach Barb's. Uh, you can use his Gaspari code there for a little bit of an extra discount. Make sure you support him. Um, and yeah, so we'll get rolling with the preview here. So just to give you guys an idea when the show is, it's going to be Saturday, May 11th. A little bit of a different format from previous Pittsburgh pros. We're going to have the classic physique show entirely on Saturday, which is, you know, kind of nice. It's been on Fridays in years past, so a little yeah, bit hard to catch that. I did it, it was on Friday when I did it. I thought it still was. I didn't even know it was Saturday this year. Yeah, new format this year. So it's going to be the classic guys going on very first thing in the morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, which will be sweet. So we don't have to wait on any other divisions. Just get right to classic. And then uh, 4 p.m. is the time slot for finals. So that's going to be men's physique and classic physique. So uh, I don't know if men's physique is going to go on first, but it'll definitely be a very streamlined show. Pittsburgh's always run real smooth, so shouldn't be any delays. And then all the guest posers, all the big open guys, uh, they're going to go on after the classic show if you guys are looking for that too. So um, without further ado, we're going to jump into the lineup. Lots of quality athletes in this show. We got three Olympians. We got three pro debuts. And then everything in between, lots of veterans, Every single guy in this show who has competed up to this point has been in a first call out, which is very impressive uh, for the Pittsburgh. That's crazy. Group. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only exception to that may be Ken Silcott, but Ken was seventh at the New York Pro in his debut. And I can't remember how big that call out was. It was either six or seven guys, and he was right there. So, um, very, very deep lineup in this show. So, here's our full lineup we got Cody Amy. Tony Koch, Tom Connolly, Greg Dawson, Camilo Diaz, Matt Grego, Jared Keyes, Demetrio Kratzon, Cleef Metellus, Brad Pfeiffer, Ken Silcott, Eric Wildberger, and Jay Yawn. So, again, very star-studded lineup. Lots of up-and-coming talent. I think we're going to see probably six to seven of these guys make the Olympia in their career at some point, which is saying quite a lot. Lots of very young talent here. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the lineup. And our first competitor is Cody Amy. Barbs, you last saw him where he took third at Hurricane. Cody's a, a very seasoned veteran and classic and just seems to get better as time progresses. What are some things that stand out to you about Cody? Well, so Cody's our first Canadian in this lineup. We got a few of those. Um, but he's got, he's, you know, he had a solid season last year. Uh, first call outs, top five placings, and he looks like much improved from that. So I think this is the best Cody I've seen. He's balanced. He's complete. Uh, he's a good poser. And uh, I expect him and his coach, uh, Dorian Hamilton, to bring the best Cody to date. Um, I got I competed with him a few times last year, uh, San Antonio, Hurricane. You know, and he's just a nice dude. So, you know, I'd like to see him do well. Um, the question for him is, you know, did he add enough size? You know, he still has to fill out his frame last year. So it'll be nice to see, you know, if, he, if he's done that. And, uh, yeah, excited to see him. Yeah, I think he's going to do pretty well here. And um, he's, he's one of those guys who kind of flies under the radar sometimes. But he's placed top four, as you can see here, if, if you guys read this caption on this post. He's placed top four four times in some very good pro yeah, shows. He's, he's right there. He's right there. He's he's knocking on the door. So this is a good opportunity for him. I think I saw he's doing New York as well. So you know he's going for it. I think it's a great move on his part. You know, get out there, hit these big shows, start to make a name for yourself, and you know, then you, you know, that's how you start to climb in this division right now. Yep, absolutely. So that's Cody Amy out of Canada. 
Another Canadian in this lineup, we got Tony Koch. So Tony last competed at Chicago last year where he took fifth place. Kind of came out of nowhere. He's a, a guy who not a whole lot of people know about and may fly under the radar sometimes, but like I think he's got a great balanced look. I'm I'm kind of questioning, uh, you know, when some of his photos have been taken because um, to me it looks like there might be a little bit of like water held in the legs, and that could just be you know part of part of the process and whatnot. But I mean, Tony has also showed up in previous shows and surprised the hell out of people. So um, you know. This, this may not be the final look in terms of condition, but he's well put together. Uh, Barbs, you've seen him compete. You were, you were at Chicago as well. Yeah, so. from Chicago. So, you know, another Canadian and another guy who's looked, you know, much improved this season from last season. I got to give a shout out, like, and credit to all these guys. This lineup, like, across the board, everyone who, like, competed last year or the year before, like, everyone has made crazy progress since then. And, you know, that's bodybuilding. That's what, that's what this sport is. So I'd love to see that. You know, he's got great shape, bubbly muscle bellies, um, and he looks like he added some good size. So I'm excited to see if he can bring the condition to match. You know, that's going to be the question mark for him. If he does, you know, he could be in the mix for that first call out. But I think condition is definitely the question mark for him, especially through the backside, the glutes, the hams, um, some of his back shots. So... We'll see. You know, he definitely looks like he's got like that thicker skin, kind of like a Akeem Williams. So, you know, let's see if he can get that last layer off and and bring the detail. Because I mean, right there, dude, that shape is insane. You know. Yeah, absolutely, man. Just very well put together. He knows how to present his physique well. Just brings a very like calm presence, and very calm, uh, very confident. You know, type of uh, athlete. So I think I think Tony's yeah, got a lot of balance, like. Those back shots right there, they're, you know, those are balanced shots. It's really going to come down to can he bring that detail through the glutes and the hamstrings. If he can do that with, with this kind of shape and bring, like, fullness even close to that, you know, he'll be right there in that first call out. Yep. So that's Tony Coke. Condition. Adam. We're going to come down to conditioning, man. Condition <laughs> kills. Yep. From the, the condition king himself. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, next up we got Tom Connolly. I'm trying to. Uh, share these photos. I gotta pull up the stage photo. All right, let's see. Here we Yo, go. This guy, I want to. I want to go to him for my teeth. So apparently, yeah. in uh, on top of being a IFBB pro, he's like a dentist who specializes in like veneers with like diamonds in them and shit. Yeah, he's like he's done teeth for like Shaq and like like all. Yeah, these I've seen. I've seen. seen so I was. I was looking at his. I was looking at his page. I was like, damn. I need to hit him up. Get my yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, so here's a couple shots from his last show. So he was first call out at Fit World. Really? He took sixth. He was uh, first call out at the Masters Olympia. So looking at some of these shots, Barb's, what stands out to you about Tom? I mean, so, you know, he was first call out here. Um, the problem is this lineup's going to be a lot harder than, than, than what he had at that show. But, you know, he's got solid shape. Um, great conditioning, like in the legs through the front and maybe, maybe the back. I don't know if it's just his picture, but, um, you know, he's an older guy, so he might have a harder time here against, um, some of these younger guys, but like I just said, you know, conditioning kills and, you know, if he, if he can bring that, you know, that's, that's going to be a big, uh, that'll be a big help for him in this lineup. Yeah, it can definitely swing some things if you come in on and, and other people come yep. in off, regardless of all other variables. So that's Tom Connolly. Switch back. Get the best view of Instagram right here. All right. All right, so next up, we got another Canadian. We got Greg Dawson. So Greg... Also, last competed at Chicago, where he took sixth. This was at Toronto, where he got third last year. So, Greg, again, a first call-out guy. A lot of upside. Great muscularity. I like his shape, too. Great arms, great legs. Barbs, you've had the chance to see him in person. Um, what are some things that stand out to you about Greg? You know, same, same kind of thing. He's got great shape. 
He's got good muscle, good lines um, for him. Same thing. You know, he's got to sharpen up and bring that next level conditioning. Um, but he's another guy who looks, you know, much improved from last year. Overall, he looks a lot denser and a lot thicker from last year, where, again, he placed at Chicago. So I think any anytime someone adds mass or density like that, conditioning is always a question mark. You know, like, are you going to be able to get that get that hard look with the new muscle tissue that still, you know, needs to mature. So I haven't really seen anything like too recent from him. So I'm just curious to see if he can bring that conditioning here. And if he does, he could be a potential, you know, dark horse to work into the first call out. Yeah, I could definitely see that, man. He's, he's definitely got the the potential to do it. It's just, yeah, he's got the look. He just, uh, he come, needs to come in sharp. That's, I think that's a, the biggest thing for him. If he can do that, like he's he's in the mix of any show. Yep. So that's Greg Dawson out of Canada. Next up, we've got Camilo Diaz out of Colombia. So he's one of three guys in this lineup who have made the Olympia. So he won Mid USA back in 2022. He's always placed very well at the Pit Pro. He's been top five, I believe, in every single appearance he's made. So he was here in 2022, 2023. And going for the win in that third consecutive year at Pitt. And you know he's going to bring the condition. He's got that nasty-looking, grainy, dense muscle. Works with Aceto. And, Barbs, you've gotten to see Camilo before. What do you uh, What do you think about his physique, man? I mean, he said he's an Olympian who's had success at this show in the past. You know, back when I did it in 2022, he was top three there. And I think since then, he was kind of like, go, go, go. He did a ton of shows. Um, and I think that ended up catching up to him. I think his body kind of tired out and he wasn't bringing his normal like condition and detail because um, he didn't even get first call out with me at San Antonio last year, um, which as an Olympian, you know, it's surprising. You know, you would think he should be in there. So. I think since then he took some time and it looks like it's paid off. And I think the Olympia level Camilo is back and this is the best I've seen him in a while. He looks crisp. He's complete. He's got those crazy arms, great posing. You know, he's got the total package when it comes to classic and just all around great dude, super nice. So I'm definitely rooting for him to do well here. Um, yeah, he's, he looks, he's he, looks like, he looks, looks like he's back to his old form, but better. So I think he'll definitely be in the mix here. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I definitely see him fighting for a top spot in the show. Yeah, for sure. Next up, we got Matt Grego. So Matt is another Olympian in this lineup. So he won uh, Tampa last year. And this is the latest that I could find from Matt. These are some pictures that I think were exclusives uh, to Bodybuilders Without Borders. So we got a, a front lat spread and a side chest here, and um, you've seen you've seen Matt plenty of times. What are some of his strengths? Yeah, so Matt is actually from like out of, like close to my area. I'm I'm in the city. He's like in the suburbs out of the city. So that there's a lot of shows uh, up towards his way, like Allentown, Bethlehem area. So you know I've I've seen him come up since he was an amateur through men's physique till now. Um, apparently, I, I saw one of his posts. Apparently he's up like 20 or 25 pounds from last year or something. So like, shit, if that's true, you know, it's, it's his show to lose. Um, even if it's half that, you know, he's still right there in the mix, you know what I mean? And in that short amount of time to put that kind of size on, it's crazy. You know, he's definitely one of the most hyped up guys going into the show. I'll definitely be in the mix. Um, if he really brings what he says he's going to bring, you know, and if he does, he could very well walk off with the win. Um, I know, like I said, I know him from my area. Um, I've seen him come up. I'll, I will say he's definitely a little uh, cocky, you know, that's, that's kind of how he is. Um, and now he's down in Florida training with Mr. Olympia, Derek Lunsford. So shit, you know, maybe he's got the right to be cocky, you know, uh, We'll see, I guess. But, you know, if he can nail the condition, again, when you add that much tissue in a short amount of time, 
it can be hard to get that separation and graininess. So we'll see. You know, he's got the size and shape. He's still young, so he might lack some detail separation, like through his chest, stuff like that. But that's stuff that comes with time. So I'm just curious to see if he can show the detail through the hams and glutes. I think that's where he maybe struggled before last year. Um, you know, whether you like Grego or not, he's going to be in the mix here, um, and he's going to be going for the win. Aceto will definitely have him dialed in, like for sure. So yeah, I'm excited to see what he brings. His top spots, man. He's, I, I love his shape. I've watched him since he was a, a men's physique guy and kind of followed yeah. along. He's with, come a long way for sure. Yeah. And he's, he's definitely put a lot of work in and it, it shows, man. He's got great structure and I think he can battle with the best. My, my one big question is I think the back double bicep was the one pose that he was vulnerable in last year. Yeah. And there are some guys here at the top where that's their absolute best pose. So I think that'll be a very intriguing comparison to really see if Matt's really put on the muscle where it needs to go. I, I don't doubt that he's improved and put muscle on. I mean, bro, again, if it's, if he's really up 25 pounds, like I don't think people realize how much, especially if that's stage weight, like that's, that's unheard of. So again, even if it's half that, that's still crazy. Ten pounds of stage weight, like that's a lot of that's a lot of tissue. Yeah, so, it's a world of difference in the look. So, so he could come out a whole different person um, from the back. I think, yeah, like you said, I think that's going to be that's where it's going to come down to for him. If he brought up his back enough, and if he can bring that detail through the hams and glutes, um, we'll see. So that is Matt Grego. Next up, we got Jared Keys. My and boy. Yep. Jared uh, last appeared at the Tri-City Pro just a few weeks back where he took fifth place. And just from what I've seen, Jared has absolutely turned up the condition from the last show, which was really the, the main piece of feedback from the judges. And that's kind of what I also told him myself. It's just the condition just maybe needed to be a, a touch sharper, not much sharper. But, I mean, he, he looks like he's maintaining that fullness while dialing in the condition, uh, what are some strengths of, of Jared's? So Jared's a great friend of mine. We go bit way back to when we were amateurs uh, competing together. And, you know, he's come such a long way since then. He's another guy in this lineup who, like, absolutely blew up since last year, added a crazy amount of size, mass all around. And he's still a younger guy. So now he's, you know, starting to come into his own. If he can nail the condition here, um, this could be a, like a breakout show for him where he can, you know, solidify himself as a first call out guy. And I know he wants that bad and that's what he's working for. So, you know, back when Jared turned pro at uh, Junior USA's, this man was peeled, peeled. I was there, I had a couple guys there, so I got to see see it in person and he was peeled. That's the best condition I've seen from him to this day. So I think if he can bring that again now, plus the added size he's put on, um, he can move up into that next tier of pros. And that's what I'm hoping for, for, you know, one of my friends, I'm obviously rooting for him and I want to see him kill it up there. Um, but, you know, it might be tough with some bigger, taller guys in this lineup. Um, I think the top three here will all be over or around six foot. So it might be tough for shorter guys to kind of shine in this lineup, but we'll see. You know, I hope I hope he can. I hope he's added enough size where he can stand next to these guys and, you know, you don't even notice. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit on a lot of really good points there, man. He's just – what what fascinates me about Jared is he gets better every year, and it's been like linear progress. Like, it seems like yeah. as time progresses, Jared just continues to, like, add size. He's hungry, man. He is hungry. He is, he is grinding nonstop. You know, he's got, he's got kids like, you know, he's, he grinds, man. And you got to respect that because he's, he's chasing his dream. And, you know, I, I, I want to see him, I want to see him do well. And he's like right there. So I yeah, think it's, I think it's great. I think it's great that he hopped into this show. You know, when you're trying to make a name for yourself in the division, you're trying to kind of get to that next tier. Like this is the way to do it. You hit these big shows, put yourself out there, you know, take, shoot your shot. And that's what he's doing here. Yep. So that's Jared Keys. 
Next up is Dimitro Kratzon, who was Mr. Universe last year, so this is going to be his pro debut. And he's, uh, so he's based out of New York, but is from Ukraine originally. And this is the most recent update. So this is from like 17 days out. Um, I was trying to look for, you know, a little bit more, more physique updates, but this is about as good as we got. Um, but just, just like from what I've seen of him, I think he brings a lot of really just like he, he's very balanced, very well put together. You don't see a whole lot of weaknesses in his physique. He may not be like super polished with the presentation. Like I know he kind of caught some heat last year for his posing uh, at, at Universe, but like he's got a great classic structure. And I Where think he won. Was... He's still yeah, he still won. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So so Barb's, what do you think of Demetro here? So I actually saw him last year when he won overall at Universe. I was there. Um, he works with Justin Miller, who I have a lot of respect for. You know, he always has his guys dialed in. You know, he works with some strong classic pros. You know, my buddy Jeff Hollenbeck's working with him, but he's worked with, you know, Jason Brown. Of course, you know, George Peterson, Steve Larius. Like, Justin's like a secret weapon here. And I'm sure I'll have him come in with a strong pro debut here. Uh, I don't think it'll be enough for a top spot here, but he could sneak into the first call out or top 10 maybe, which would be a hell of a way to start your pro career, you know, um, and then have some momentum going right into New York, which I'm pretty sure he's doing. That's right there in his hometown, you know, same place he turned pro, um, you know, yeah, he's got, he's, it, it's, it's there, you know, he's with a debut. It's, it's all a question mark. But, you know, he's got the shape, he's got the structure, you know, now you just got to kind of see what he does with it. Um, I'm mostly Italian, but I do have a little bit of Ukrainian in me from my dad's side. So <laughs> let's hope he can represent his country well, uh, come out with a strong debut. And again, I think with Justin Miller, he definitely, he should, for sure. Yeah, there's def there's no question about, you know, having a, a good coach in your corner and how much it helps. And that'll certainly be a factor in this show. So conditioning is definitely not going to be a question here. Um, it looks like his posing has gotten better in, in my opinion, yeah, you know, from these, from these videos, but, um, yeah, yeah I remember I Nick really Jr. Come down Nick to Jr. Or someone just like ripped it, ripped his, I remember that after that, that was JT, they were like going back and forth. <laughs> that was JT. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a whole thing, but you know, I, yeah. Truthfully, like all, all that aside, I really do like Dimitro's physique and he seems like a, a decent guy too. So, you know, I'm rooting for him. I hope he does well in his pro debut and uh, can represent his, his home country real well. So it's Dimitro Kratzon. Next up, we got another pro debut. This is Cleef Metellus. So this is from Universe. He won Class D at that show. And I mean, I think... It goes without saying, this is just like a mountain of a man. Like, dude is massive. <laughs> Barbs, what do you think of his physique from what you've seen? So, another guy who turned pro at Universe. So, I saw him. Um, and, yeah, he's, you know, it's a big dude. That's that's a big structure. Like, that back. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's, that's serious, serious size right there. D-class. Like, that's like the Avatar class. So, it's a big dude. Uh, I don't know too much about him, but, you know, looking at his page, he looks pretty solid, nice shape, and obviously that big structure. Um, taller, Being a taller guy, though, it could be a good or a bad thing. You know, more stage presence, take up more room on stage, make other guys look smaller. But you need to make sure that you don't look lanky on stage when you're next to, like, more compact, you know, dense physiques. So, for him... You know, he's big, but, uh, again, conditioning is going to be the question mark for him. He needs to come in way more peeled than he was at Universe. You know, this is this is a new level of competition now, and it's hard to make it by just on shape or structure alone. you got to be peeled, like straight up. So I'm excited to see his debut and some new blood in the pro ranks with, you know, all these guys debuting here. Um, and him and the last two guys both coming out of Universe, so... It's cool to see these guys, you know, trying to make their mark now. Yeah, I think he's got a lot of upside too, man. You make a lot of great points there. What 
is interesting to me is I think he's got all the the things that you can't control. You know, he's got the muscle. He's got the, the genetics in terms of just being a massive dude to begin with. He's got great lines and, and shape and everything. I think he really just needs to focus on the things that you can control. And that's presentation, so posing and condition. And if those things are nailed, yeah. like he's he's right in there because he's got everything else. So, you know, I'll be intrigued to see yeah. the controllables have been controlled. Yeah, no, that's, you, you nailed it with that. Um, if you have to like nitpick on, you know, what needed to come up, at least from universe, you know, being a taller guy, filling out those legs, you know, just so again, when you're standing next to these more compact guys, you know, I think it's going to come down to those things. Like you said, posing, conditioning, and, you know, if he's filled out enough to not look lanky with that big structure when you're towering over other guys on stage. Yep. So that is Cleef Metellus. All right. So next up, we got another pro debut. So th this is pro debut three of three. We got Brad Pfeiffer out of Texas. So he won Class C at NPC Nationals in 2022. So it's been a while since he's been on stage. But Brad's a guy that, you know, I've, I've followed since he was in the amateur ranks and he was kind of always like one of those guys who was hanging out towards like the top of these classes, but it took a little bit extra to break through. So even though he took quite a bit of time to, uh, you know, make his pro debut, he was probably, in my opinion, one of the most pro ready guys who came out of that class. And just it's because of his polished physique uh, he's just got great lines. He's just well put together, good stage presence, just a lot of good, good things you see uh, that you may not get in every single classic competitor. So, you know, I think Brad's got a lot of upside. What have you uh, seen in him that, you know, may stand out to you? You know, uh, great shape here, you know, from his, I think this is two weeks out updates. Yeah, I was looking at these earlier. His condition looked like it was in a good spot for him to kind of nail it here. So I'm excited to see this debut. You know, he looks pretty balanced, balanced, which goes a long way in classic. Um, and then again, his posing, you know, looks solid. He's definitely leveled up since turning pro and he looks a lot thicker and denser. But you know, I don't know. I don't I don't know if it'll be enough in this lineup to walk away with a top placing for him. But who knows? Maybe he can work his way into the top five to eight or top ten. You know, I think five to ten, the show is all going to be wild cards. And some of these new guys can definitely work their way in there if they come correct for the show. Yeah, great points, man. It's going to be a lot of shuffling and really it's just like who comes in on because on paper, a lot of these guys have kind of placed similarly and especially the rookies, man, they've got a lot of potential to just like jump into a big show and make a name for themselves competing with some really seasoned and proven pros already. So Brad's definitely, definitely got an opportunity and I think he's going to, you know, make the most of it. He's going to control what he can control and well, ab and die shots. You know, that's that's classic all day right there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a great shot for him. You know, the shape there, like the his whole lats just flow into his, his midsection and then back out to the quad sweep, like that's a that's a sick shot for him. Yeah. So that's Brad Pfeiffer. Next up we got Ken Silcott. So Ken is based out of New York. So I think his plan is to hit Pittsburgh in New York. His pro debut was right here. So this was in 2022 where he placed seventh at New York. And the biggest thing that stands out to me is structure, man. I, like these shots, to me, I'm like, if, if this is a seventh place physique, like <laughs> that's pretty crazy, honestly. Um, it, it says a lot about how good that lineup was. So, Barb, just looking at a few of these shots, what are your impressions of Ken? I mean, he's got a sick physique. I've I've seen Ken compete in my area. Uh, I was there when he pretty much swept the whole show, won overall, took best in show. And at the shows out here, when you win the best in show, you get like a big ass WWE gold plated like championship belt. They're they're pretty sweet. So, um, 
I remember, you know, uh, seeing him and I was like, this dude's going to turn pro like this kid's going going somewhere. Um, and then he went right in the universe and he made it happen. He took over all there in open bodybuilding. You know, so clearly he got he has what it takes. He definitely looks improved from uh, his last showing in New York here. Um, but like, look at the detail through his quads, like the cross striation, his shape, like, you know, it's all there. Um, I think, I think he still needs to add more size, but you know, he's doing it. He has it all. He's got the shape, the muscle bellies, the separation conditioning. Again, the cross striations and the quads, you know, all this, all this stuff, you know, as someone who prides himself on conditioning, I respect when I see other guys, you know, bring in the freak factor when it comes to that. Um, if he's on here, he could definitely jump ahead of a lot of these guys. You know, he's got, he has some of the best potential out of like the guys in this lineup. And he's someone who can really be good in the division. Um, and as someone, you know, from close to my area, you know, watching him kind of come up, like I'm definitely rooting for him to do well here. And we will see. Yeah, it's, it's definitely an opportunity for Ken. He has been like crazy quiet the past few weeks. Last update we saw from him was like seven weeks out. So I'm really interested to see what the final look is because I, I got a strong feeling that Ken's going to bring something different and this, this might be a breakout show. For yeah, me. I hope he does. You know, the, the potential's there. He just, at this point, just needs to make it happen. I think he took last year off to kind of reset. And, uh, you know, we'll see how that worked out for him. Yep. So that's Ken Silcott. Next up, we got another contender, an Olympian last year. This is Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. So this is from his last appearance at the Texas State Pro. So you've competed with him, Barbs. This is a guy who has just again, used every year and every time that he's taken off, he's improved. He took second at Pitt last year, which was a breakout show. And then he went on to win the Optimum Classic, which was just like a week or two later. And then ultimately went to the Olympia. So, Barbs, you've had a chance to see him in person. What do you think of Eric Wildberg? I mean, first thing, like he's, he's a big dude. Um, he's definitely one of the favorites coming in. Last year, this was definitely his break, the breakout show for him that kind of put him on the map, you know, going head to head with the bull. Um, some people, I think, even had him winning it. Um, but he came back to that show, like improved and peeled, and he went head to head with someone who's known for their conditioning. You know, he's a bigger, taller guy, big structure. He's got great lines. You know, it could be a situation where if he nails it, he could take the win here. But me personally, I think it may be like a repeat situation of last year where he comes close but ends up maybe taking second or third. You know, I think his height here, it could it could look lankier compared to the some like some more compact, denser guys. But, you know, who knows? He can definitely take it here. You know, he's coming. You know, he's coming in peeled um, and he'll have the most strided glutes on stage. That's for sure. And with his back detail, you know, if guys are off and don't nail the conditioning, like it's his show to lose. Yeah, agreed, man. The thing that makes Eric such a really tough matchup is because he nails the condition, the fullness, and he has the width, which are three things that are just like super hard to get all nailed right. So like that's that's one thing about Eric that you know, I think makes him hard to beat. Where he can be beat is structure. And it's because Eric does, though he has a lot of width, he also does have a little bit, you know, wider of a, a rib cage and a wider waist, but he, he's able to pose around that. So I think just kind of depending on what he looks like in some of these front shots compared to other guys, you know, like maybe like Grego, that's going to determine if he can take the win versus, you know, second or third, I think is going to be probably, probably that front shot, the front double bicep. So. Yeah, he's he's definitely right there for the one of those top spots in the show, no doubt. So that's Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. And our last competitor is Jay Yant out of Texas. So Jay's last appearance was at the Charlotte Pro this year where he took second. And 
This is Jay's second year as a pro. He made his pro debut at the Pit Pro last year and has only leveled up. Like Jay's added so much size while maintaining the great shape and the great condition. He works with Dino Estrada, who's another classic physique pro. So I, I know Jay's one of those guys with just a crazy work ethic. He stays very, very loyal to, to his craft. Uh, so Barb's, what do you think of Jay's physique, man? I mean, his kid's got it all. Like that's that's about as classic as it gets right there. You know, he's another favorite coming into this, coming off his second place finish at Charlotte to uh Fabi Fabioni. I don't really know how to say his name. But that that's that's someone who's been hyped up as someone who can be a top Olympian. And Jay was right there, you know, in the mix with going head to head with it. him. And, you know, I think it was closer than a lot of people think. Um, and I think some people even had him winning that show. You know, I think Fabioni is a higher caliber athlete than the majority of this lineup. So, you know, that says a lot right there. You know, he's made insane improvements from last year. You know, like we mentioned with Grego, you know, saying close up to 20, 25 pounds. I think it's the same thing for Jay. I think he's 18 to 20 pounds bigger than he was last year. You know, that's a lot of tissue. Um, he literally ate himself. <laughs> he, like, he went. He went from a boy to a man in that in that uh, off season. You know, it's some of the craziest progress I've seen in a while. You know, him and Dino, his coach, um, they have the formula, and they're definitely on to something here. He's got great shape. He's got flow, symmetry. He's he's got it all, and he's a great dude. I actually talked to him. You know, and I think he was going through some stuff after the show and actually was trying to hit another show and he had some issues with flights and then got his contract in late. So he wasn't able to do it. And when I talked to him, I was like, you know, dude, everything happens for a reason. And maybe you're meant for something bigger here. And, you know, if he pulls this off, this would definitely be just that for him, you know, getting his win at a big show like this one, you know, that, that could be huge. Um, for him, you know, I said this to him as well, you know, it's a matter of when, not if, you know, like he's, he's a guy who will definitely be on that Olympia stage, you know, again, as classic as it gets, he's definitely got a super bright future in, in, in the division for sure. hundred percent, man. He's, he's one of those guys I've followed since he uh, turned pro junior nationals. I remember back when he won the, uh, the Kuglo show as an amateur. He literally looked like a different person now. Yeah. Like he's, he's really leveled up. But even back then, I was just like, how is he so young but so good? I was just like, I was like, <laughs> dude, this guy is different, man. Like, you know how yeah. you can just like look at somebody and you're like, that's like, like they were, they were meant to be a bodybuilder. Like, that's what I thought yeah. when I saw Jay. And he's just yeah, like, no doubt. every day, every show. So. Yeah, I think Jay's got a great shot at you know being a top guy here, and I'm I'm certainly rooting for him. So, so that's our full lineup, guys. Now we're gonna get into our picks. So this is the the moment of anticipation. This is where it gets fun, boys. So uh, Barb's and I are gonna give our uh, top five and uh, pick a winner we won't do we won't do in any order for top five we'll just pick a, a ref top no five. no come on let's let's I'll pick the order. order oh we can do an order. Yeah. why not <laughs> you want to go first or you want me to uh, you, you go first <laughs> all right sure. sure thing man so i want to i want to just uh preface everything uh with the fact that i think this lineup is crazy crazy close extremely deep uh i i typically you know i i give people the benefit of the doubt but like this this lineup is crazy close because every single guy in here has placed top seven in a pro show and all these rookies in my opinion were pro ready when they got their pro cards so like this is this lineup is just nuts so i think we're really just trying to pick who's going to be on versus you know Who's going to be yeah, off? It's, it's going to be a great show. You know, I mean, I got a lot of guys looking for their opportunity to like make a name for themselves. So I think a lot of these guys are coming out hungry and like it's going to be it's going to be a battle up there. You know, while I'm surprised more like big name guys didn't hop into the show, 
Um, you know, it works out because it gives a lot of these guys that are right there the opportunity to make it into that top tier of the division. So it's going to be good. Yep. So top five, here we go. So I'm going to go number five. I'm going to go with Camilo Diaz out of Columbia. I really like Camilo's look. Grainy, dense, hard muscle. Going to be one of the most muscular guys in this entire show. Um, I think really the only thing that's going to beat him here is structure. I think all the guys who plays ahead of him here are going to have better structure. So I'm going to go with Camilo in five. And in fourth place, I'm going to go with a bit of a, a dark horse here. This is Ken Silka. I'm going to go with Ken uh, here. I So, again, I just go back to the shape. I think Ken has arguably, out of anybody in this lineup, the best structure. And I think that's going to carry him far. He's been working a lot on his posing, his presentation. And I think that's going to be essential in this lineup. Just every little thing is going to count here. And I know Ken's going to nail the condition. He's going to have the shape. I think the, the muscularity is probably my biggest question with Ken in, in comparison with some of these other top guys. But I, I think he's just like the epitome of classic. So I got Ken in fourth place. Let's see, in third place, I'm going to go with Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. He's got everything. I think really the only thing he's going to get beat on is structure here. I think the, the two guys that I've got ahead of him just have slightly better structure. They're going to be peeled. Eric is, is a wide guy, but I do think his waist in comparison with these other guys is going to look just a touch wider. And... Um, I've got, so I've got Eric in third. In second place, I've got Matt Grego. Uh, if I can find a click the right guy. I got Matt Grego. I think he's one of those guys who's just like structurally very superior, just in the grand scheme of things. Uh, these front and side shots are really hard to beat. And I think the back is the biggest question. That's one thing where I think Eric Wildberger could beat him. Uh, depending on, you know, how much his back has come up, because it, that's probably Wildberger's best pose. So that'll be an interesting comparison. I think it's going to be like splitting hairs there. But I think Grego, again, he's another one of those guys who's good enough to win the show. I think any any guy I've got here in the top three could win it. But I think where it really makes a difference here is the guy that I've got winning has proven that, his his back has come up. He's got a, a really good back double bicep. And he's shown that he can compete with some of the best athletes in classic, particularly in his last show. And I've got I've got Jay Yon winning the show. Um he's a young pro, but like the dude's got all the tools to be a top classic pro at, at some point in his career. You know, maybe maybe that's this year, maybe it's next year, but I think Jay is going to win this show and, and go to the Olympia. So I've got Jay on winning this one. Solid, solid lineup. <laughs> All right, my turn. So I almost want to work one to five because, like, for me, fifth is fifth is going to be a toss up. Um, this is where it's going to be guys that are battling to get into that, you know, next tier you know, fighting for that spot. So it could be Cody or Tony from Canada. You know, maybe Jared sneaks in there. Maybe Ken, you know, like it could be, it could be any of these guys. It's all going to come down to who shows up and who brings it on that day. Um, and I'm rooting for a lot of these guys. So whoever it ends up being, you know, I'll be, I'll be happy for them. Um, Top four, I think, is is pretty solid. You know, maybe that's what Aaron meant when he said this is an easy one to call. You know, I think the top four is going to be fourth. I think uh, Camilo Diaz, again, I think he's back to his old form. He's looking like his, his former self again. He's got that sharp conditioning, you know, the big arms, you know, and he's been here before. He's He's a vet. He's done all these big shows. He's been on the Olympia stage. So, you know, he's a great poser. So I got him in fourth, but, you know, to be honest, he has all it, 
takes to finish higher than that here. So I'll be happy for him if he does. Um, top three is where it starts getting a little tricky for me. And I've been going back and forth over this. And even right now, I'm still like, ah. So this is what I think. All the top three guys. So we got Jay, Eric, and Grego, right? I feel like Jay and Grego match up better together, you know, closer to, you know, same kind of shape where Eric's going to be kind of the odd one out in that, in that he's taller, lankier, you know, bigger frame. You know, I feel like Grego and Jay are like more compact and denser. So I'm curious to see how it's going to look with all these guys, you know, stand next to each other. But Eric's back shot is crazy. You know, he's got dugout glutes, his back, you know, his width, the detail, like it's all there. And, you know, Grego, even if he comes in up, you know, 20 pounds, I don't think it'll be enough to beat Eric from the back. Um, that's really it. You know, again, Grego's kind of a wild card here because like if he really did put on 20 some pounds of stage tissue, like that's, he could be coming out a whole different person. And then if he does, then again, he could be first here, but I'm going to have to put Grego in third here for that reason. I think Eric's just going to beat him from the back. And I think that's, what's going to drop him down. You know, like you said, it's going to be close because Matt's going to probably take a lot of these front shots. Like he'll probably hit that lat spread for his favorite classic pose. You know, that's a strong pose for him where he's showing that it's all there. You know, the, the, the quads, the shape, you know, he's, he's definitely bigger up top from the front. Let's, let's see how much bigger up top he is from the back. And then on top of that, he's got to come in peeled. He's got to have, he's got to get his glutes and hands in, you know, I beat him in Atlanta last year. And I think that's probably why I was dug out in the glutes and hands and he was a little softer there. And I think that's why I finished ahead of him there, you know, cause then we go on to Chicago and he finishes ahead of me there. So, you know, it all comes down to, if he nails it, he's got a seat on his corner. So I'm putting him in third, but he, he has, he has the potential here to, to win it. You know, there's no doubt about it. Um, so then we got Jay and Eric top two, right? So my thought here is I think Jay is just more complete, um, more balanced top to bottom. You know, he just, he has the look like that. The, this right here, that's classic. The small waist, you know, sweeping quads. You know, Eric's got crazy shape and his crazy physique. But when you're up against someone, like that where they're just put together like that and everything just flows like like that's what classic physique is and that's why i think jay's got a bright future um in this division and honestly i feel like it's like fate for him at this point how it all shook out where you know the list comes out for a show and he was on it and then he ends up not being able to do it because of other reasons so you know i think it was meant for him to be at this show I think this is like this is his moment to really you know, again, even Charlotte, dude, like, again, Fabioni is someone who's, like, being hyped up as a top Olympian, and Jay went head-to-head -head with him. So, you know, I think if you look at it that way, it's like, that's that's why I have Jay taking it. I feel like Fabioni's a higher, you know, level caliber than Grego or Eric at this point. So, I think the fact that Jay was so close with him, I think... I think this is going to be his, his moment and his show. And he's going to be heading to the O after this weekend. Man, this is going to be exciting. <laughs> get, your pop, get your popcorn. Because this, this, like, this is really going to be, you know, like if you follow the sport and you follow division and you really look at this lineup, how we broke it down today, like this is like everyone always says like, oh, stacked lineup, stacked lineup. Like this is like a very competitive lineup. And it's that reason because, again, it's a lot of guys who are, like, right there who can be at the top of the division if they, you know, bring it and start to make a name for themselves. So, you know, it's super exciting. It's it's definitely going to be an exciting show, and it's got to be. It's Pitt. It's one of the biggest ones of the year. You know, this is, this is what this show is all about, coming out, starting the year with a bang and making a name for yourself, putting your name on the map to at the start of the year to set yourself up for the Olympia later in the year.
you know, going to be a signature show. That's for sure. A lot of guys trying to make their names for themselves. So that's, uh, that's our picks for this show. Before we get out of here again, I want to make sure to give Barb's another shout out. Go give him a follow here on Instagram. Coach oh, I'm Barb. changing my picks. I'm changing my picks. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> it's that close though. We're like, I could sit here yeah, and so go back and forth. And log on Instagram where <laughs> It's that close, guys. It's gonna be it's gonna be one of those uh, shows where <laughs> some crazy shit's gonna happen. I think I think that's guaranteed. <laughs> no but, doubt. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys give Barb's a follow here. Uh, use his code Barb's twenty for Gaspar Nutrition and Barb's. Before we get out of here, man, uh, do you want to give any shout outs to the people? Uh, anybody you want to say thanks to in your corner? Um, I will just say, you know, I, it kills me that I'm not competing in this show. Um, in Philly, this is probably the closest show we have here. So <sighs> I kind of went nuts last year, did all those shows. So needed to take some time, but you know, me and, uh, me and Sebastian, we're, we're cooking it up and, uh, I'm excited to get back out there this year. Um, still wrapping up the off season here, putting on putting on a little more size, but you know, what we've added, I feel like is solid tissue. I'm still lean at like, you know, around 230 right now. So I was probably around like 200 last year. So we definitely have added some tissue already. I think even if I started prep now, um, we would still come back improved. But like I mentioned to you before we started, you know, I want to come back and look noticeably improved. You know, I don't want to come back looking the same. So I don't want to have all these close calls I've been, I've had in the past, you know, so excited to get back out there. Shout out to Seb. He's, he's uh, recovering from a hernia surgery. So I'm sure he'll, he'll watch this. Um, and uh, yeah, just excited to get back out at, at it this year and we will see what happens. We're cooking up though. I'm <laughs> no, no, no. not, not saying what we're doing yet, but things we're in talks. We're, we're, we're planning. Hell yeah. So, uh, so again, want to give Barb's a, a big shout out. Thank you for his time. Yeah. Thanks um, for having me, bro. Love, love doing these. Always man. Uh, so yeah, you guys can stay tuned for updates on this show. Going to be trying to throw those out for you on Instagram. You can find me at CPC bodybuilding. Uh, I'll make sure if they, I don't anticipate a live stream, but if there is one, I'll be sure to throw it in the description of this video. And also post all the clips on my Instagram as well. But uh, that's going to do it for the preview today. I'm Brant. That's Barb's. Make sure you guys keep it classy. We'll catch you later. Peace.